Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I'm going to show you how you can create 2D cell shaded materials without Sketch and Tune. So what does that mean? That means for all of you out there who has C4D Lite, and that's the free version of C4D that comes with After Effects Creative Cloud, or any other uh, Cinema 4D that does not include sketching, how you can create this 2D cell shaded materials with the built in tools in even the free Cinema 4D Lite version. So let's come on in, let's, let's go and uh, play around with C4D Lite and how to recreate the cell shader. All right, so 2D shading in C4D Lite or any other version without sketch and tune. So uh, so what is cell shading? Well, cell shading is this very simple shading, kind of cartoonish shading, uh, that is usually achieved with the C4D uh, Sketch and Tune cell shader. Now, the cell shader is included in the Sketch and Tune module. So we have these four shaders in here. Cell's going to be one of them. And what the cell shader does is allow you to apply simple diffuse and shadows and specular onto your object here. So basically you control uh, things like, let me get into uh, this gray material here, and basically what happens is you can control how your object's being shaded by adjusting these knots. Now you can see what's going on here, let's actually get to this one, uh, that's kind of just adjusting the band right here, but if I adjust these knots, these gradient knots on my object, or on my material here, that is applied to this outer part or the main body of the Game Boy, you'll see that we're actually changing how this is mapped onto this object. Now, in the uh, in the cell shader, you can have a couple different light sources. So you can have the camera as a light source, which just chooses, uh, just has your camera that you're looking through be the primary light source. So I can turn that on. And you'll see that in the uh, viewport up here, or the little preview window, that it's straight on head, uh, just, you know, almost like headlights. Uh, your camera is going to act as the light source, your, so your light is going to be head on. Uh, and you also have this lights option where I have a light in my scene right here, and it's an infinite light. And that means I can just rotate it to change the angle of view, and that's updating how the diffuse is being cast on my object because the diffuse is going to be lit and shaded by my light. So you can see that, you know, this is what's going on. We have a lot of this darker uh, teal and we can just adjust these knots. And if I want a lot more light colors, I can just adjust these knots. And now we have, um, now we have very light borders or very white borders. And then again, this is all controlled by the angle of your light. So depending on how your light is angled, we now have more of our darker colors over here because the diffuse is hitting the front face of our Game Boy uh, fa uh, object right here, the face of the object right there. So that's a little overview of how the cell shader works. If you want to learn more about the cell shader, if you actually do have Sketch and Tune, uh, check out the tutorial that uh, I'm going to post in the in the uh, tutorial description to learn a little bit more about how the cell shader works. So, but the main thing I wanted to go over is how how this works, how this works by lights, and how it works by this uh, gradient with no interpolation. You can see there's no interpolation, and typically there'll be like a smooth knot, so there'll be some smooth shading. And you see that you know you for a cartoon or for cell shading you really don't want any smooth knots. So you just want to turn that to none and you get this really nice, sharp, cool, uh, nice 2D cartoonish uh, cell shaded edges. So how can we recreate this in C4D Lite in any other version of C4D that does not have the Sketch and Tune module? Well, the first, uh, the first solution that I came up with was to use a Fresnel shader. And the Fresnel shader is actually based off of uh, what parts of your polygons are facing or the which polygon angle is facing the camera so you can see in our little preview uh, window here a material preview that anything that's facing the camera is dark and the polygons that are kind of facing away from the camera are more light now this is working if I just invert these knots this is working like that camera 
option in the cell shader where we have our camera as the light source. So if I go down here and change the interpolation to none, we're going to get those sharp knots that we that, that we had in our cell shader. So I can then uh, uh, adjust some other knots, add some other knots in here. I can uh, get my teal colors back, right? And there we go. This is basically recreating uh, that camera as a light source uh, function in, um, in the cell shader. So that's all well and good, but this is limited to the fact that it's using your camera as a light source and we, there's no way to actually adjust this, uh, aside from moving these knots around and moving the actual object itself or the actual camera. So I'm, uh, looking through the camera here and you're going to notice that as I move my camera that's actually changing the shading. So that's the little limitation with using the Fresnel shader. Now uh, there's another way to do this where you can actually use the light as the actual light source that casts the uh, illumination or the diffuse and this is due to another method that I'm, I'm really thankful that uh, this guy pointed out Dominic Ruckley. Uh, he posted in the original tutorial I had that used the Fresnel shader, and he mentioned that there's another super clever way to actually go about uh, faking the cell shader and actually be able to use lights. So let me just uh, share uh, Dominic's uh, workflow here. So what you're going to do is you're again you're going to this is all going to be in the luminance channel because you want that bright luminance. You want that flat. Uh, illumination. You don't want any diffuse, so that's why we're doing everything in the luminance. And uh, Dominic's method was to actually use the Lumis shader. So the Lumis is basically uh, specular. It's a specular shader. So you can see that in our little material preview window here. It's just applying specular. We have different uh, uh, kinds of specular that you have fine-tuned control. You can also do uh, this Enistropy in Enistro I can't really pronounce that, but basically what it does is, uh, you know, for like uh, like steel and metal, like usually you'd want to uh, enable this anisotropy thing. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not, uh, but we're not going to worry about that. Uh, we're just going to worry about the specular. And actually, we can just turn all of these speculars off. These are just different levels of specular. Basically, all I want is the diffuse from the actual Loomis shader. So you can see that this is kind of just, we're starting at gray and going to dark. So I'm gonna bring up the illumination to about 200% and you can see that we're now getting 100% uh, white and 100% black. So we're getting the full range of, uh, of diffuse color or grayscale color uh, applied here. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to combine the Luma shader with a colorizer. Now what the colorizer is going to do is take the Luma shading and then apply a gradient on top of that and do a colorize. So almost like Colorama in After Effects, we can now map different colors onto that original Luma uh, Luma shading. So again, we're, we're, we now have a gradient that we can now go and change interpolation from smooth knot to none. Now this is looking very familiar, right? So now we just change these gradient knots. So let's get our teal colors back again. Uh, so something like that. And we'll get uh, another tealy blue color that's a little bit lighter. And then let's get our uh, lighter blue here. So you can see we basically, if we, let's see, let's add another knot here, maybe. Uh, so what we're doing is, again, recreating that diffuse in the cell shader with uh, the combination of Lumos and then colorizing it with this, this flat gradient. So the great part about this is, is that since it's a uh, diffuse, uh, Lumos is a diffuse thing, it's going to be lit by whatever camera or whatever light is in your scene. So now this is going to act very similarly to how our uh, cell shader worked set to the light mode. 
So again, we can change how this light's working. We can go in here and say, okay, well, let's get a little bit more of the darker shades in here so we can just adjust these knots, right? And uh, there we go. We basically just kind of recreated, aside from the original colors, I'm a little bit off from the original colors that I chose there. I can try to tweak these a little bit better. Uh, but you kind of get the point here, as I just recreated the cell shader, uh, at least the diffuse channel, with this combination, this uh, this really super clever combination of Lumos and then the colorizer. So big thank you to uh, Dominic Ruckley uh, for pointing out this super useful uh, workflow and allowing me to share it to uh, for all you guys. Uh, so this is another method to actually use light. So what did we do? So here's our cell shader again. So what we did was we used the Fresnel shader to kind of recreate how the cell shader works set to camera mode. And then we recreated the cell shader uh, as far as light mode uh, with the Lumos and uh, colorizer. Now, the uh, so it doesn't recreate everything. We still, we got this far, we can do the diffuse and you can see that we recreated this diffuse option, but unfortunately we can't recreate uh, like the shadow part and the specular and illumination. So it does go a little bit further in the cell shader, but I tell you what, if you don't have sketch and tune and you want this cell shading, this the both the Fresnel method and the uh, the Lumos with the color colorizer. I tell you what, that gets you a heck of a long way along for pretty much anything you would want to do. Uh, and just just to just to note that uh, when I actually do uh, apply shadows, uh, it's going to be a hard ray trace shadow, and you can see that kind of show up here. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, when you're working with stuff is if you want to do flat shading, you want a flat hard shadow. So this ray trace shadow is going to be what you're going to want to uh, go with. And just one final thing, uh, this whole entire Game Boy model was modeled inside of C4D Lite. So what does that mean? So that means that you have a, even though C4D Lite is kind of limited with its features, you have all of your primitive objects that you can use as well as um, all these, all these modeling tools. So if you, if you're bad at modeling like me, uh, these modeling tools will kind of make you be a good modeler because these are such intuitive tools uh, to get up and running and modeling inside of Cinema 4D and C4D Lite. Uh, so in C4D Lite, you have everything here except this Bezier uh, object. You do not have that, but you have the loft, you have the extrude. Uh, lathe and sweep. So to make this little Game Boy guy, basically it's just made of primitives. So that's a plane. We got some cylinders in here, some cylinders down here, and then basically it's just uh, uh, splines that have been extruded. So we have a few extrudes in here. We have a sweep object in here as well. So you can do a lot and create a lot of and do a lot of modeling inside a C4D light. So don't don't discount it if you don't have. Uh, a full version of Cinema 4D and you have After Effects Creative Cloud, get into C4D Lite. Uh, I'm hoping to do a lot more uh, tutorials with C4D Lite and kind of what you can do in it, but I tell you what, this this uh, the cell shader with the Lumos and the, and the Fresnel and the, and the colorizer, uh, that's kind of part of the equation is how to get that flat 2D cell shading uh, without sketch and tune. So hopefully you guys can you guys get inspired by this and start creating some stuff. If you if you have C4D Lite, would love to see what you create in that or any other version. Uh, just you know don't no more excuses anymore, right? So just get get to creating, uh, learn some 3D and C4D Lite if you're a 2D person in After Effects, and uh, have some fun. 3D is awesome. Don't don't be constrained by uh, just 2D, man. All right, so that's going to be it for me. Again, thanks. A big shout-out to Dominic Ruckley for sharing his Lumos and uh, uh, color, colorizer uh, workflow. 
uh, that that was big. That was huge. And the and the Fresnel, my old crappy Fresnel workflow. Uh, that you know, hey, if you want to use your camera as a light source, that's where you go to. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments section, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye everybody.